do a real quick video, <coughs> excuse me, in reference to uh, two missing and endangered children from the state of Tennessee. The first child is Irish Crumb. She is seven years old. She has black hair, brown eyes. She is five feet tall and she is 80 pounds. Irish may be in the company of her non-custodial mother, Kalia Serrata. Miss Serrata is wanted by the Rutherford County Sheriff's Office for custodial interference. If you see Iris or Kalia Serrata or you have any information regarding their whereabouts, please contact the Rutherford County Sheriff's Office at area code 615-904-3055 or TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND. Another family is pleading for answers in what seems like a custody battle gone wrong. An endangered child alert is now out in Rutherford County. It remains active. Seven-year-old Iris Crum was supposed to be picked up by her dad, but when he went there, she was gone. He tells our Kelsey Gibbs he just wants his daughter home. She will act shy at first, and then once she feels comfortable, she, she will open up and just very bubbly attitude and her outlook is 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 very wide and broad. Anthony Crum says there's not a day he doesn't think about his little girl. She's very outgoing, she's very talkative. She's very uh inquisitive and hyper. You know, very she, kind. Yes and very kind. Seven year old Iris is his world and his world came crashing down when he learned his daughter is missing. Crum and his best friend, Michael Surge, who is Iris's godfather, traveled to Rutherford County to bring her home. But when they came to get Iris, she was gone. We were told to come down here by both lawyers, both Kayla's lawyer and Anthony's lawyer, that the exchange was gonna be happening on Friday. So we did what we had to do to get into town. And here we are, we're She's missing. An endangered child alert was issued by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation for Iris. The TBI says the child may be with her non-custodial mother, Kayla Zarita. Mentally and emotionally, definitely she's going to be her. Crum lives in San Diego. The Superior Court of California confirms that Crum was granted legal custody in 2018. An order filed in September 2023 states the court found that Iris's mother violated the current court orders. She has no parental rights to the child whatsoever. And so it's, it's very distressing that, this, that we're stuck in this situation. It's been five days and no sightings of Iris. They believe someone here knows something. Speak up. Speak up. Let me have my daughter back. Protect Iris. Do what is best for Iris. Crum says he won't stop searching for his little girl. I made a promise to my daughter once that regardless if anything ever happened to her, I will fight and I will do whatever I can. I'm doing that. In Murfreesboro, Kelsey Gibbs, News Channel 5. Zareda is wanted by the Rutherford County Sheriff's Office for custodial interference. Anyone with information is asked to call the number at the bottom of your screen. Rutherford County Sheriff's Detective Stephen Lewis is working this case. This next young man is also missing from the state of Tennessee. His name is Sebastian Wayne Drake. Now, Sebastian is an endangered missing youth because he is autistic. Sebastian is 15 years old. He has brown hair and eyes. And he is five feet, five inches tall. And he weighs 120 pounds. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers lives in Hendersonville, Tennessee. 
He went missing on February the 26th, 2024. He was last seen near Beach High School on Stafford Court. When he was last seen, he was wearing a black sweatshirt and black sweatpants. He likes to hide under things, so TBI is asking residents who live near the search area around Beach High School along Long Hollow Pike to check outer buildings, garages, and under decks. In case Sebastian used any of these hiding places where you've seen him, know Sebastian's whereabouts or any of the things, call the County Sheriff's Office at 615-451-3838 or TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND. Three, a shift in the search for Sebastian Rogers as it enters its eighth day now. Today, law enforcement announced they're scaling back, but the family of Sebastian is still holding on to hope for his safe return. They spoke exclusively with our Holly Thompson earlier today. Holly live in Hendersonville there at the command center. Oh, Holly, how are they doing? I tell you, obviously very emotional. Sebastian's mother, Katie, she broke down several times during our interview today. I mean, as you can imagine, this just touches that mama's heart and she wants him to come home. And we listen in as she talks about what these last eight days have been like for the family. How are you coping? We're on a constant roller coaster ride of helpless and hopeless and many other Emotions all in one, and it's a never ending roller coaster. It doesn't stop. It won't stop until he walks through the door. Hey, Katie tells us that she woke up that morning, and within three minutes, she knew Sebastian was not in the house and called 911. They say they have no idea what would have motivated him to leave the house. They say they have been fully cooperating with authorities, and no, they've also spoken with his biological father and those who know him from school. So we're going to have much more on this story. We're going to be talking to her about what they've been going through, the very latest with the search, also reaction from family and I even asked them are they in the clear now what is the latest with this story so we'll have much more coming up but for now for the latest on the search I'm going to toss over to Danielle Ledbetter for that part of the story Danielle yeah, Holly, so you can see that this lot behind me is pretty much empty. This is at the command center. Earlier today, we've seen a lot of first responders leaving this command center. And this is a big difference from what we saw last week. That lot was full with hundreds of first responders all here looking for Sebastian. Now, law enforcement officials told me today that they have thrown everything they possibly can at this search. So we, of course, have told you about the dogs, the horses, the drones, but they also brought in cave specialists and people to search underground and storm drains. Eric Craddock with the Sumner County Sheriff's Office said the decision to scale back did not come lightly. He also did say that they will continue to be committed to finding Sebastian and there's no indication that he's not alive. Holly. All right, Danielle with the latest there. Now much more coming up throughout all our evening shows. Coming up at four o'clock, their message for the community. We have lots to get to, but for now, Holly Thompson live here in Hendersonville. There is a missing elderly woman in Detroit, or from Detroit rather. Her name is Sherry Anderson. She is 62 years old five feet, seven inches, with black hair and brown eyes. She weighs 120 pounds. Now, Ms. Sherry suffers from dementia and she was last seen leaving her home on Provost Street. She was last seen wearing a white coat with fur on it and a pair of black boots with fur on the boots. There is no 
description of what type of clothing she was wearing. And once again, I'd like to reiterate that she does have dementia. If anyone has seen or knows the whereabouts of Ms. Sherry, contact Detroit Police Department, 8th Precinct Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Once again, that's 1-800-SPEAK-UP. And let's keep in mind that Miss Sherry has dementia.